What's good, YouTube? Today I want to touch on a huge issue in Yu-Gi-Oh! And that's why your cards are so damn expensive. And I really think that we talk about money a lot on this channel. And a huge reason why your cards are so expensive is supply and demand. That's the pure basic. That's very, very obvious. There's so many of this card, so the price goes up. Or there's a lot of people looking for this card, this card goes up. Or a lot of people are trying to sell this card right now because it got reprinted or limited, the price goes down. That's the super obvious. But we'll talk about the fallout from that also in this video. But the first thing you may not have considered that I like to bring up when talking about people who are scared to buy cards. People who are, you know, more fearful. And that's the fact that your cards are worth something in many different currencies. You can go today and sell, say, your DD Assailant here. And you may get more or less depending on the nation or the currency value. But you could go sell your Assailant right now for US dollars. You could go sell it for Euros. You could go sell it for Pounds. You could go sell it in a lot of different nations. Uh, Australian dollars, for example. There's just so many different currencies you could actually go ahead and turn your cards into. For cold hard cash, you could sell internationally, and people often do. That's why during these market watches during buyouts, you often see Canadian or Australian even listed in our territory where you can still buy it and it's the cheapest. And that's kind of the amazing thing. We have something much akin to gold where you can go get a different currency, a different currency, a different currency because it's a worldwide product. It's probably a lot harder to get yen for your English cards now that they can't play our cards. But back in the day, the Japanese would come over and spend a lot of money on cards at events. And that kind of went away once, you know, there was that split. But they still want play mats and other things that are, are able to translate over to that area. So let's go ahead and talk about expensive cards and why they're expensive uh supply and demand is a huge part and i often stress in my market watches the mix of collectability and playability and sometimes it's just collectability which is something newer into our game as it ages so as time goes on these dr4 dd assailants are super expensive people played with them and played with them and played with them and they got released <clears throat> what like 10 years ago now plus it's insane what time actually does to cards. And now, there are still people who want a playset of this card. And there are so much fewer. Because many, many people who have their playsets kept them. Or they played with them. And people weren't as careful that maybe they played against uh, with. As they were careful with their own cards. And corners got bent. Cards got flimsy. Time wore. But then there are people who kept them in binders. Kept them in their closet. I keep my cards down in a closet. But seriously, like... A lot of people see that cards are to play with, not to collect. But there is a mix now, and co the collector's market is rising and surging, and it's becoming a real place to, you know, get the cards you want because the values seem to hold a lot better because there's not car these cards aren't getting reprinted in, like, the same set, the same rarity. They're not in danger, so people find these as safe investments, safe to trade for. And uh, there's, there's playability in some of these two for past formats that kind of uh, affect things. People love GOAT format. GOAT format, if you didn't know, is the first ban list from 2005. So there's, there's other reasons to buy cards than just to play in current format. People love to sit down and play Necroz mirrors, E-Dragon mirrors, GOAT mirrors. Like, there's kind of a reason to go back even though Konami doesn't support these formats anymore. People love to go back and play them themselves. And it, again, creates this thing. You, you know Exarion's a secret in the 10 too, but here's the DR4 version, and the lowest here is like $200 almost, $190 for a near mint. And there's only three available. Three total on market here on, on TCG Player. And I'm only using TCG Player for this one instead of eBay because we're examples uh, for what's happening. But it, it's crazy that this kind of thing happens, right? The, these are worth so much, but... What it really comes down to, what these prices come down to more than supply and demand, is you the consumer, you the people who are willing to pay for it, you the people who drive the supply down and the demand up. It's our love for the game. It's what we do and play and compete and overall just gush out that creates these prices. And that may seem like hubbub at first, but realize almost every single meta, even though the secrets have doubled in boxes, we still have $70 cards. And here's the fallout from that too. 
the cards go up, the cards go down. Somebody's always taking the loss in terms of somebody ended up paying for this price because it's not just all artificial. People are really handing out. You can go to eBay, see completed sales. People are really handing out 70s for barrages. Some people handed out 100. So think about it. Some people handed up all the way to 100s and then it falls to 70. Let's say it gets limited, it falls to 40, and then it just falls out of favor, gets reprinted in the Megatons, keeps falling, keeps falling. And one day, it ends up as a $3 first ed secret rare. So each step of that way, the, the 70 to 50 to 30 to 20 to 15 to 10, somebody keeps taking those losses in a sense of value. And, and maybe they didn't pay, maybe they packed it, you know? Maybe they never cared about the value. But the thing is, there were people out there paying 70s, 80s for sorcerers, and that cash kept going and going and going somewhere. Someone does take those losses. So the artificial, artificial gains are matched by the artificial losses, and they become real because people actually hand out the money for these. And again, it comes down to supply and demand. The meta cards are in big demand because people want to go play in tournaments. People want to win. People want to play their decks that they want to the fullest of their ability. So they go out and buy these cards, and it drives the demand up. And that's why a current meta card is worth so much more. And... It's just very interesting. Another thing, of course, is the base cost of product. You know, vendors get the boxes at 60. They retail at what? At $4 a pack, like 92 or something. It's, it's you know, that barrier to entry. Well, I, I would buy a box just to get a barrage and whatever else comes with it. But you're not guaranteed that barrage. And so it goes throughout the a whole case of pulls. How many people want this card? How many people want that card? And the prices kind of fall into place, right? So... It's just really crazy that if you think about it, it's not just vendors that are causing it, but the consumers that cause these prices. Vendors are a huge part, don't get me wrong, but they can't hold all of the supply. Uh, and there's another huge reason with pre-sale prices, why they're so high and why they sell so successfully high, is that people who get their hands on these cards first have an advantage. And then you go to tournaments and you win more of this product really quick because other people don't have the same advantage as you. So your investment makes its money back if you're playing well and you got this product early. And all these factors combined create this kind of odd price swirl around pre-sales too to where it's up and then you see it go down every time. But the people investing in it are usually trying to win fast rather than just have the card in hand and not worry about it. And there's that consumer too. But there's so many factors that all collide into this point of supply and demand that's honestly quite interesting. And when we follow it, it's just a beautiful mix. Your cards are worth something in every currency. That's cool. There's collector reasons to keep cards. There's ways to play past formats. And that's I'm kind of surprised the full power pendulum format isn't worth more. But it's it's just really cool like to see that, that what age does to a card that was 170 so what do you guys think about these prices and what i'm talking about like it, it's really quite something and maybe i've missed part of the picture but i wanted to give you the bigger picture of why supply and demand is the way it is why pre-sales are successful the way they are why the collector's market is swelling there's just this crazy amount of supply and demand for Yu-Gi-Oh, and it really comes from us the players and once you realize that you know, there's not much you can do about it because we love this game we play. We can't all just stop buying it because we want it to live. We can't just stop, you know, paying vendors their prices because we got to play in tournaments. But that's why it is the way it is. And I see a lot of those comments, oh, it's cardboard. Well, it has real tangible prices because people really are paying this to play. It is pay to play, not pay to win, by the way. Even though I just gave that example of the pre-sales. Uh, in that case, it can be, but they, you still can make strategies that are really good. Like, if you were expecting barrier statues, you could have made... Or not. I gave that away. If you were making, if you were prepared for Zodiacs, you can make barrier statues. But it's, it's just really insane to, like, see the kind of ability to spend so much on decks, so little on decks, so much on a goat deck, so little on a goat deck. And it all really comes down to your love of the game, what you want out of it, supply and demand... 
and the reasons for the supply and demand. Thanks for watching, guys. I really hope you enjoyed this. I love talking about money in Yu-Gi-Oh! It really interests me. Uh, you know, I did it for a while, and I may or may not be doing it again. I probably won't be, though. I, I really... After my talk with you guys, and after, like, seeing Communicat, and I really think I'm going to be picking up the 101 series. And the first one's either going to be Shadol Lightsworn or Dinosaurs. So in the comment section below, actually tell me which one you'd like to see. I think I'm leaning towards Dinosaurs and Jurassic Park memes. But let me know what you guys want, and, uh... I'm really, I'm really, you know, enjoying the channel, and I think I'm going to start putting a lot more time into it. Thanks for watching.